Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Hull Bible College. It is August 6th and we're looking at the last part of 1 Corinthians and chapter 14 from verse 26 to 40. In the previous passages Paul has given um, um, a general uh, comment with regard to tongues and the gift of uh, languages which um, he has um, begun his teaching. But in this particular passage, he's described the confusion over the subject. He now is going to prescribe order in the use of these gifts. And this isn't Paul's personal opinion in matters. This is something that he says is from the Lord. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. So this isn't um, uh, an insignificant point. And there's a lot of particular points that he raises, but I want to just tell you in my password the most important, in my opinion. He begins in verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm or a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? He says, let all things be done unto edifying. Everything that happens in the church should be edifying. What we mean by edifying, in fact, he explains really what he means by edifying it is something that is a blessing something that's a teaching something that is an exhortation or comfort these are the things that should be the character of what is preached and taught in a church but then in verse 27 he says if any man speak in an unknown language let it be by two and at the most by three and that by course, in other words, one after another, and let one interpret. That's very important. But, he says, if there is no interpreter, then let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. So, what Paul is saying is that when you hold a church service, if somebody stands up and says, I would like to give some teaching in a language that nobody here knows. He then at that moment must stop and inquire whether there is anybody present that can interpret what he's going to be saying. And if there is no interpreter, he is to keep silent in the church. Now this means that the gift of Language is not just an ecstatic speech of gobbledygook. This is a real language and he's going to be teaching or preaching or exhorting in a foreign language. Now the question we might ask, a very honest question, is what's the point? What's the point of doing this? I mean, he can speak anyway in his ordinary language. If he's got something that is to be a blessing, something that's to be a teaching, something that's to be a doctrine and an encouragement to the believers, then why doesn't he just speak in his own language? Well, he does have the gift of languages. He is able to preach in a language that is unknown to the people in the room. And he's allowed to use that gift. Paul says, don't forbid him from using the gift. But if he's going to use the gift, then there are certain rules that he must obey. He must ensure that there's going to be somebody that can interpret what he says when he's finished. After all, just listening to a foreign language and not knowing what on earth it's going to be about is not going to be of any benefit to anybody whatsoever. And he says, and let the prophet speak in two or three and let the others judge. In other words, when a prophet gets up and he preaches, uh, as, as it were, a direct revelation from the Lord, then those that are leaders in the assembly are to judge what's said. After all, it might be completely off the wall and they might request that he sit down. And he, saw, he says also, if anything is revealed to another that's sitting by, then let him hold his peace. In other words, 
this isn't just um, a jack-in-the-box meeting. This isn't just get up and say what you feel. No. If somebody's sitting there and he receives something from the Lord and somebody is already speaking, then he's to wait and to wait patiently until it ends. So he is to, he is to hold his peace. For you may all prophesy, but one by one, so that all may learn and all may be comforted. You see, the purpose of all these gifts is the is the learning, the teaching, and the comforting of God's people. And he says this, he says in verse 32, he says, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. This isn't something that's an uncontrollable thing. If a person gets into a state in which they're completely out of all control, then you can be certain that is most certainly not of the Spirit of God. Because Paul says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. If a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, then he has the fruits of the Spirit in abundance in his life. He has an abundance of love, an abundance of joy, an abundance of peace and so on. All of the fruits of the Spirit are seen there in abundance. But Let's remember that the last fruit of the Spirit is self-control. If a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, he will have an abundance of self-control. He isn't out of control. He isn't ecstatically speaking. He is a person that is in complete control over his own gift. The Spirit of the prophets is subject to to the prophets. He says God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. He says this is what's happening right across the board. This is what's happening in all the churches. That there is order and there is peace and there is a benefit to the hearers. Uh, there is not confusion. There is no confusion. Confusion is not the um, tone of Christian services. And then he goes on, he says, let your women keep in silence in the church. It's not permitted for them to speak, for they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. If they want to learn anything, they can ask their husbands at home. It's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Um, he says, what? Came the word of God? Um, out from you or came it unto you only are you a little church that just is completely separate to everybody else where you just do your own thing is that what you think no he says if you if you if you think yourself to be a prophet if you think yourself to be spiritual then you are to acknowledge that the things that i am writing to you are the commandments of the lord but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. If there, there are people, Christians maybe, who just don't want to know. He says, I understand. If they don't want to know, then let them not know. If they want to be ignorant, then let them be ignorant, brethren. So wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. Long to have a ministry that is of a blessing, that is teaching, and that is comforting to God's people. He says, don't forbid anybody to speak in tongues. They are allowed to do that. It's not forbidden. Of course, of course, this was said within the age of the apostles. This was said within the apostolic age, when all of these gifts were in their full flow. But we must remember, he says at the end, verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. There needs to be an order. There needs to be a sense of peace. And there needs to be a sense of decency. Falling on the floor in a fit is not a decent thing to do. It's not required. The Lord does not think that that's wonderful. So we do things decently. We do things orderly. We do things to edifying. And may God bless you. Look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.